Hi, so I hope everybody is here to hear about mistakes today, right? Everybody's here to hear about mistakes. Are you here to hear about my mistakes or you wanna share some of yours? Well, you might hear some of mine today and I might also make some today. So you're in for a treat. Um, so my presentation is titled, How to Make Mistakes, a Female Biomed's Memoir of Questionable Decision-Making. So today we're just gonna talk about mistakes and also, again, a couple that I've made throughout my career and how those mistakes have pushed me forward in, um, in the things that I do today. The first thing I wanna do is introduce myself. Okay, so who am I? I am Jennifer Chester. I am a biomed level two right now um, for Crothel Healthcare. I work out in Harris Health and I love it. So that's part of who I am. But I am also, I am a mom of two very spunky kiddos. Okay, uh, one, is Kennedy, she is nine years old. Um, she does aerial silks and uh, she gets straight A's in school. So she is amazing. That is my son, Jackson, he is eight years old. And if you're wondering, I do have one boy and one girl, so that means I am done, no more kids, okay? So, and that is me and them together. Jackson also does basketball as well. He's also a straight A student um, and that, takes up a lot of my time I'm going to basketball games and aerial silks stuff and everything. So that is definitely part of who I am. The next thing is I am the founder of a nonprofit organization called Next Gen Tech Moms Mobile Discovery Museum. And I take technology and engineering concepts. Uh, so science, technology, engineering, and mathematics to kids around the local Houston area and the outer lying communities as well. Um, we bring it exhibit style, program style. So we come in with, uh, you know, a hovercraft or something like that. And they learn about different concepts and they are able to try it. Um, our motto is learn it, build it, play it. So we always learn a little bit about what we're going to do for that day. They get an opportunity to build whatever it is that we are talking about as well. And then at the end, they use the exhibits, as you can see, like I said, I don't know which one of these is the, uh, the little pointer, the hovercraft here. This is them playing with snap circuits, learning about electricity. And this here is them playing on our coding table. This is where they're able to do some robotics with colors, okay? As you can see, this is one of their favorites because they always have a great time with that one. Okay. All right, next thing I am is a digital creator. Um, I also do YouTube videos for kids. We teach um, all those engineering concepts online on YouTube. So that's another thing that I do. So let's get into it, right? Uh, let's get right into it. This is, we're gonna talk about what are mistakes, okay? So the Webster's definition of mistakes, as you can see here, is an action or judgment that is misguided or wrong. I also think that they need to add a little bit to this definition, but Webster didn't ask for my opinion. So, but I will let you guys know that I believe that mistakes are the stepping stones that we need to move forward. Sometimes we don't learn everything in a book, right? Um, something, sometimes we have to make mistakes in order to move forward and to learn. So as Nikki Giovanni said so eloquently, Mistakes are a fact of life. It is, a, it is the response to that error that counts, okay? So that's what we're gonna learn about today. We're gonna talk about what is the response to that error and how do I move forward from those mistakes? Hopefully video plays. Uh-oh, it went on right past it. Nope. If it won't, then we'll just move right on. And she left. Yeah, I was gonna say, I don't know if it has a play on there or anything. There's nothing there. Okay, that's okay. We'll move right past it because um, it's just a short video talking about how mistakes can make us feel, especially in the workplace, right? 
Um, mistakes don't make us feel good. When we make mistakes, we can feel a lot of demoralization or dehumanization or shame behind our mistakes, right? So Webster's word of the day, it is the SH word. Anybody know the SH word? It's shame, okay? So today we're gonna talk about the shame that comes behind the mistakes that we make. All right, so story time. We'll start out with some of my mistakes. As a young biomed, I worked for a dialysis company that shall remain nameless. Um, and I was just starting out, it was my first biomed job. I was just coming out of the military. I was an avionics technician, moving into something just a little bit different than what I was used to. And I just got thrown right in there um, to work as a biomed. So, Basically, I had been working uh, for this company for a couple of months and I was, I felt like I was a rock star. I was doing everything that I thought I needed to do. And then I was, you know, making ground in my new career. After about six months, like I said, I had something that I had never experienced before and that was a inspection from the DMV. Um, when the lady came into my office and she wanted to see all of the things that I was doing at that time, I'm probably going to tell my age, but we had like a big shelf full of books that we kept all of our work orders in. There was no TMS or, you know, computer systems, everything that we did, all of our PM documentation was kept in notebooks. So at that time she came in and she saw all of my notebooks, all pretty and you labeled correctly and everything, and she just snagged one notebook off the shelf. As she went through that notebook, as luck may have it, she found the one notebook that I felt like on that whole shelf had every single mistake that I feel like I ever made in my whole career, okay? So she went through it and she nitpicked every single thing, every single thing that she could find, date errors, missing um, values, everything, that she could find, she found in that one notebook. Um, that day, I felt like maybe I shouldn't come back. Maybe I'm not good enough to do this job. Maybe this one isn't for me. Maybe I'm just really bad at paperwork, right? I'm just not good at documenting things. Um, there was a lot of thoughts that came through that um, were really hard. But as you know, because I'm standing here before you, I did not not show up that next day. There was some things that I had to do to move forward. So along with my story time, I was, okay, when I was younger, we used to go to church all the time. Background on me, I'm a PK, I'm a preacher's kid. So in church, they used to talk about this story. It was a story of a farmer and a donkey. Anybody ever heard of it? Nobody heard the story? So it was a farmer and a donkey. The farmer had this loyal donkey that he had on the farm and he would use them to do a lot of work, right? So one day they, decide, they decided that they wanted to build a well. So the farmer and the donkey went to dig in this well. The donkey was toting dirt and doing a lot of work to dig this well. As they kept digging the well, the well got deeper and deeper and it became more difficult for that donkey to get out of the well. So eventually, he tried to pull one last pile of dirt out of the well, and the donkey fell in. At that time, the farmer was, didn't know what to do because she couldn't help, she couldn't get the donkey out of the hole. She had no way to get the donkey out of the hole. She wasn't strong enough to get the donkey out of the hole. She had no other way but to bury the donkey. So the decision that she had to make was to fill the hole so that nobody would fall in this hole again and also in turn bury that donkey. That's our donkey and that's our farmer. All right, so we're gonna talk about mindset, right? So in the fixed mindset, that donkey had a choice too. Now that the donkey fell in the hole, he had a choice. He could have a fixed mindset, and that means that he could get his feet stuck in the mud, right? He could just stand still 
and allow that farmer to bury him in that hole. Or he could take the growth mindset. The growth mindset means that he would have to shake the dirt off and stomp it down and stand on top of it. So we're gonna talk about, do we wanna be the donkey that lets it bury you, lets the SH word bury you, right? Or do we wanna be the donkey with the growth mindset where we shake it off and we rise up to the next level? Well, let's talk about it. How do we shake it off and we rise up? The first thing that we wanna do is recover from that mistake. So going back to talking about the mistake that I made, like I said, I had tons of bad paperwork and the lady at the DMV found all of it. Uh-oh, I didn't snap past a lot of slides there. Okay, sorry. All right, so like I said, we're gonna recover from this mistake. So the first thing I had to do was, I'm standing there looking like, what happened? How the heck did she find this notebook, right? What, what can I do now? Now that she's found it, I'm in deep SH word. <laughs> so I, I need to figure out how can I work through this problem? The first thing that I had to do was own it. I had to own the fact that I made the mistake and I couldn't make excuses. I couldn't say, hey, I only started this job six months ago, right? I, I couldn't make that excuse. I'm new to this. I've never done this before. So it's somebody else's fault. It's not my fault that I made the mistake because I had to own the mistake. Nobody else did the paperwork but me, right? So I had to take on ownership of that mistake. So the first thing we have to do is own it. The next thing is, how do I fix it? Now that the paperwork is bad and she's seen it, and she's seen all the bad things that I've done, how do I recover? How do I fix that mistake? Let's see if I can look. I haven't been using my notes at all, guys. And I feel like that might be a mistake. <laughs> all right. So owning up to it was step one, but next I had to dive in and fix what was messed up. This time I went full on detailed detective and I went through each one of those documents making sure I left no stone unturned, okay? It was about, it was about being thorough. It was about double checking and then checking again after that, getting into the nitty gritty and starting to fix those errors big and small. So it was really important to get that second chance, go in there and fix what I messed up. So immediate correction is always the step to go. As soon as you find out that you made the mistake, you wanna make sure we make immediate correction. If the mistake involves equipment, repair, maintenance, you wanna rectify it immediately to ensure patient safety, and equipment reliability. All right, so next one is, is a tough one for me. Um, how many people like to apologize? Nobody? Nobody's hand raised? <laughs> you appreciate, you like to apologize. Um, it's not an easy thing to do, but it's very necessary. If that, if that thing that you did caused somebody else's work to be impacted, you have to make sure that we have some, we have to be sympathetic to their situation, right? So we wanna make sure we have empathy and humility by apologizing to anybody who was affected by that mistake. If it affected our teammates, if it affected our manager, because sometimes our managers need that heads up, even just to apologize to them and let them know because they don't wanna get blindsided by your mistake either, okay? So we wanna make sure we apologize. Okay, and then there's recovering from the mistake and you wanna tell it. So in that same breath, like I was talking about the manager, we wanna make sure we tell all the necessary personnel that the mistake was made. So now that the DMV has found the paperwork and she has, like I said, found everything that I did wrong, I wanna make sure that I allow everybody that needs to know 
who's on the need to know list, I need to let them know. Because telling it is not always easy again, but it's, it's definitely necessary. The reason why it's necessary is because it actually builds trust and accountability, okay? So even though it's difficult to tell somebody that you made a mistake, they know that if you ever make a mistake again, that you're always going to come to them and let them know before it blindsides them. Or so you're gonna come to them and let them know. So they know that if something pops up, they're gonna be like, no, either Jennifer didn't know about this or you know, something isn't right here because she would have definitely told me. All right, so the next one is my favorite in the not category. Um, <laughs> document, document, document. You wanna make sure you document um, not only the mistake, but how you fixed it, right? You wanna make sure that you put in your documentation that, hey, I missed this, but I also fixed it. So an example of that, um, I'll talk about another mistake that I made um, is that like, I don't know how many of you guys work in biomed in hospitals or in clinics. Is there, can I see a show of hands? Yeah, okay. So there's always that hiding place, right? There's always that place that they hide the equipment, the stuff that they don't wanna show anybody, the old vital signs machine monitors, the probes that don't work, you know, all of that stuff, they hide it in a closet somewhere. So what happened to me, I went through and I'm doing all my PMs for the month and there's a bunch of vital signs monitors that are, I can't find them, can't figure out where they are. Okay, the mistake that I made was not asking the staff, hey, where are these vital signs machines? I went through the whole clinic and I can't find them. I didn't ask them, so I UTL them. And then maybe three months later, I get a whole list of uh, PM sticker out of date, PM sticker out of date, PM sticker out of date work orders. Okay, so what in the heck, where did these, where did these vital signs monitors come from, right? So it was very important for me to document that because now I know that they keep a box or they keep a closet full of old equipment that they don't want anybody to see. So I need to document where that closet is. I need to make sure that everybody knows that there's a closet of equipment that nobody knows about so that nobody makes that mistake in the future. Oops, I clicked it too many times, nope. All right, so. After we've recovered from the mistake, we've owned it, we've told people about it, we've apologized for it, we've done everything that we can now to fix it. Now we wanna learn from that mistake. The first thing that we wanna do is reflect. So this is the time we're like, whew, boy, that was a big mistake. Now I'm gonna sit down and figure out what happened. So we want to do reflective practice. Reflective practice is basically just looking back at the mistake and figuring out what was it that I did. Was it because an oversight? Did I just, you know, not look at that, or I just didn't do it correctly altogether, or was it a lack of training or knowledge? Because that can be corrected, right? So how do we correct the lack of training? or a lack of knowledge or a lack of understanding of equipment. We can ask our supervisors or ask our directors or ask people for training so that you don't make the same mistakes again. Hey, you know, I opened up this whole injector. Now I don't even know how to put it back together. I tried my best, but it was a mistake. <laughs> but I need training on this so that I don't run into this mistake again. Another thing is workshops like here. We go to MD Expo, there's lots of workshops that are available to us. If you make mistakes in documentation, they offer workshops and documentation so that you don't make those same mistakes again. Another really big one is self-study, okay? Um, when I was a young biomed, they used to talk about us because we'd be carrying around service manuals, all trying to read, you know, lots and lots of stuff and highlighting stuff because it's important to make sure that you're up to date on all the equipment that you're working on every day. All right, so part of learning, and I know this one's weird, but it's part of learning is affirmation. Because not only did you make a mistake, there are maybe some things that you did well, right? 
You can learn just as much from the mistake that you made as you can. You can learn just as much from the things you did well as you learn from the mistake you made. Okay? Like, how did I not do this, but I did all this really great? Well, I might have just need to put this as the first step, you know? So we talk about the things that you might have done well. All right. So the next part is to inspire. So inspire who? The first person that I implore you to inspire is yourself. Because that's the, that's the important person that needs the inspiration from the mistake you made. Because like I said, that day in the, when the DMV came, I went home and I said, guess what, I'm not going back. I'm going on Indeed, I'm gonna start searching because there's gotta be something else than this, right? Because I made this big mistake. But I had to sit down and I had to think, you know what, Jennifer, this one mistake does not define the biomet that you are or the professional that you are, okay? It was one mistake and you learned how to, whatever, you, whatever we learned from that mistake and we're not gonna make that mistake again. So positive self-talk, very important. So you go home that day, you don't go on Indeed, you, you get, that, get out of that browser, don't start applying for other jobs. I've done it, I know you guys have. <laughs> you don't give up. You got this, it gets better, you are capable. Hang in there and it's gonna be okay, all right? It's gonna be okay. Everybody makes mistakes. Raise your hand if you've never made a mistake before. Okay, because if somebody raised their hand, the first mistake you made was being in this presentation. Okay, so let's talk about self-advocacy. So early I, earlier I said that you did have to own the mistake. You couldn't make excuses, but there's something different um, in that called self-advocacy, okay? It's okay to advocate for yourself though. I'm not, not using it as an excuse, not saying that, okay, well, this is my excuse for making the mistake, but you can advocate for yourself and make sure that other people know that, hey, yeah, I made a mistake, but I'm still a good biomed. I'm still a good professional. I can still do this job, okay? Whether I made a mistake or not and stand stern on that. Because just because you made a mistake doesn't mean that they, the, are allowed to give up on you because you're not giving up on yourself. All right, so the next person we want to inspire, or the next people we want to inspire, is your peers. So the mistakes we make every day, there's a saying that our teams are, are only as strong as your weakest link, right? So if you make a mistake, and you keep that information to yourself, who does that help? Not a single soul, okay? It might help you, maybe, but it doesn't help anybody else. An example here that, that I have, again, this is about my mistakes, right? So I was in the clinic um, the other day, and we have this badge, I'm sure all of you guys know about how you have to use your badge to get in and out of the doors, right? So our service elevator, we have to use the badge to get on any one of the floors. So I confidently, I walked behind somebody to get in the door because they were walking through the same door. And then I confidently got on the elevator and the doors closed, take my badge and I hit it against the thing and I hit the button and nothing happened. Well, why am I not going anywhere? So I put the badge up there again and I saw that this time it usually has a green light. It was a red and a yellow light. So that means, uh-oh, access denied, <laughs> okay? So at that point, I'm standing there in the elevator waiting on somebody else to come open the door, okay? I had plenty of time to think about this mistake, okay? So I'm sitting in the elevator. Eventually somebody comes and they go up to the third floor and I get off, even though this is not the floor that I meant to go on. So I get off the floor and I look at this badge. I'm like, I can't believe my badge is not working. I just had it replaced like a couple weeks ago, it's not a big deal. I don't understand why it doesn't work. I look at the back of it 
Guess what's on the back of my badge? The expiration date. That was an oversight on my part. I did not even know that I had an expiration date on my badge that was like one year. So um, after that, as we're talking about inspiring our peers, of course, I get on the phone. Hey, man, did you know our badge has an expiration date? No, I didn't know. Yeah, everybody needs to check on that expiration date because nobody wants to be stuck on an elevator for an hour and a half trying to figure out why you can't get anywhere in the clinic, okay? So to use that information to inspire our peers and to make sure they don't make the same mistakes we do because nobody has time for that, all right? All right, so peer learning is very important, okay? Not only sharing your mistakes, but also getting information from other people. Not only is it important for that reason, but it also opens a sense of community. It, it, allows, it allows you guys to feel free to share with each other, you know? Be vulnerable with each other to let them know, hey, you know, we all make mistakes, you know? We all need support sometimes. Because if everybody keeps it to themselves, it doesn't, it doesn't help the team. So it doesn't, in, it doesn't inspire a sense of um, openness. All right. So the next one is we want to inspire the next generation. Those biomeds who are coming in right before us, the ones like me who came in bright-eyed and bushy-tailed before the DMV got there. Okay. We want to make sure that they know that it's okay. Look, I made the same mistakes. Or I've made mistakes that are very similar, or I made worse mistakes. So you're gonna make it. Um, this picture actually made this image here. So this is a picture of the donkey, right? He's still at the bottom of the well. And all of the young donkeys are standing there, listening to him say, be very careful when digging a well, okay? But the important part of this picture is where is this donkey? In the well, okay? So he's still in the thick of it, right? He's still in, middle of, in the middle of recovering from this mistake. He's still in there and it's okay. Even though we may not feel at 100%, we still may feel like we're covered in that SH word, right? We're covered in the SH word. It's still very important that we're taking the correct steps in correcting our mistake so that we don't, you know, teach them the wrong way, okay? They need to know that one, hey, you can do it, you know? If you fall in the bottom of the well, don't stand there, don't be a dummy, shake it off and keep rising to the top, okay? The next thing is that, hey, you, you can do it because you see me doing it. I'm doing it right now, okay? actively trying to get myself out of this well. Lead by example. All right, so some of you, I, did, I don't think I covered everybody's table. Some of you have some post-it notes on your table in front of you, okay? So like I said earlier, I am a next-gen tech mom and my theme is to learn it, build it, and play it. So we are in the build it portion of our presentation today. So the build it portion is where we use what we've learned in action, okay? So on those post-it notes, on the red post-it note, I want you to write one of the mistakes that you've made. A mistake that you've made. Anything, per, any of them, anything you think that somebody can learn from. When you're done writing that mistake, there are some green post-it notes underneath that and I want you to write down what you did well. Even though you made a mistake, what are some of the things that you did well on each one of those green post-it notes? or that you do well. On the yellow post-it note, I want you to write, uh-oh, sorry, I, I read that wrong. So 
What did you learn is on the green post-it note. And what did you do well is on the yellow post-it note. What did I do? What did I learn on green? What did I do well? And then on the blue post-it note, we want to write, what would I have changed? What would I change? What will I change? All the post -it notes should be filled, by the way, with something. Once you're done writing on your post-it note, I want you to take them and stick them to the wall on either side of the room. Yep, both walls, either one, whatever one's closest, whichever one's the easiest to get to. If anybody in the back wants to participate, there are some empty post-it notes here. You know, don't be shy. We want to hear about your mistakes too. Yeah. <laughs> Is it falling off? I tested them. I made sure that they stuck to the wall. <laughs> you guys are so nice and neat on that side of the room over there. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. That's that. Uh, um, what is it, culture of perfectionism that we have in the medical field. Yeah, I know, right? To think about. There are also a lot more lessons that we've learned that we can share and inspire people. All right. A few more minutes. I want to give everybody a chance to put one up if they want to, that wants to.
All right, everybody done? Is that the last one? <laughs> that is great. That is so great. All right, anybody else want to put one up? Everybody's all minds clear? All right. So if you look around you, you'll see the post-it notes on the wall. Which one of those represents mistakes? The red one. Is that the only color we see? No, it's not. So this is just a visual representation of the fact that the one mistake is only part of the story, okay? That one mistake is not the entire biomed, okay? This is not all red, right? There's a lot of other little pretty colors in there too, okay? So this is just a representation that you are not your mistake, but you're also what you did, what you learned from that mistake, what you did well from the mistake, and you also know what you would have changed. And that's really important because the next time that thing comes up, what's gonna happen? You're gonna do it differently, right? Even if that one's a mistake too. <laughs> I mean, you know, you may make another mistake. It may be wrong again, you know? But the point that I'm trying to make is that we're not all red, okay? And I know that in the medical field, like I said, we have a culture of perfectionism. Perfection is a mirage. There's no such thing as perfect, okay? So every single person makes mistakes. Every single person learns from their mistakes, whether it be a good lesson or a bad lesson, okay? But we all are not just the mistake that we made. All right, so I know what you're here for. We talked about some of my mistakes, but I'm gonna talk about some more of my mistakes, right? You all said you're here to hear about mistakes, right? Yes. Okay, so let's talk about some mistakes that you don't have to make. I'm not just gonna make you guys share yours. I'm gonna share some of my dumb decisions too, okay? So let's talk about mistakes you don't have to make. The first one is, okay, how do I start this story? <sighs> it was Christmas. And my mother bought me this beautiful Pandora bracelet, okay? It had the little rhinestones on the heart and could clasp and everything. I was so excited about this Pandora bracelet. I put it on immediately and I wore it and I never took it off, okay? Um, I happened to be at a, um, at the time I was working for a dental laser company and I was going in to do a PM, had done this PM a thousand times. This is something I had done. I mean, I could do it in my sleep, okay? It was one of those things I had done so many times that it was, it was no big deal. I was in a hurry um, because I was trying to catch a flight so I could go home because at the time I was field service, so I was probably in like Timbuktu somewhere. So I was trying to hurry up and do this PM. The last part of the PM is to change a 12 volt battery that's on the inside of the laser, okay? You can't see it, it just has like a little dark gap that you kind of stick your arm into and then you have to like imagine where the leads are, take them off and then pull this battery out through the dark hole that you put your hand in. As I put my hand into that dark hole and I'm taking off those leads, all of a sudden I feel like my hand is on fire. And I mean, it is like lit up. I yank my hand out and guess what? That pretty silver, uh, Pandora bracelet was now a bright shade of red, okay? So it had touched both contacts on that battery and it lit up and not only did it electrocute me, it also burned me pretty bad. So my lesson in that is jewelry is pretty, but electrocution is not, <laughs> okay? So this one here is my hand after I burned it and electrocuted it, okay? Beautiful Pandora bracelet plus 12 volt battery, all trouble, okay? That's an, that is a uh, mistake you don't have to make. Women, please, men too, don't wear your jewelry when you're doing your, uh, your work, okay? All right, next mistake. And I hope I'm not the only one who made this mistake. Well, I kind of am 
I kind of hope I am the only one who made this mistake because it was it was another doozy. Um, okay, so we're talking about what is this word? Chemicals, right? So um, one of my departments had got they had a broken trophon. Okay, I purged the trophon, sent it off for repair, and they had been bugging me about this trophon. They were like, hey, when is our trophon gonna get back? When is our trophon gonna get back? Every day they were calling me, hey, when are we gonna get that trophon back? So when the, when the box came with the trophon, I was like, yes, trophon's here, then quit bugging me, okay? Stop blowing up my phone. So I went and took the box and I brought it into the room and I opened up the trophon and I'm just sitting there, I didn't put any gloves on. I didn't do anything, I was in a hurry again. Like I said, it was an oversight and I started opening this bag and I realized that my hands were wet. I was like, what is this? You know, I'm, I'm still I'm still opening this uh, Trophon, this bag that the uh, Trophon is in, not even thinking about it. And before you know it, I started to feel a little bit of a tingle. Anybody ever felt that tingle? <laughs> okay, so I started to feel a little tingle on my hand. And before you know it, I looked down. Uh oh, I went too far. And this is what my hands look like. Actually, this was this was the good state. This was before it got really bad and they were like all white. Okay, so it kind of burned off the first layer of skin. Um, I also, with this um, being said, I also worked in dialysis and um, we used renalin in dialysis back when I was there. We used to pour these big old jugs of renalin into the water systems to do the, the water system disinfect. And um, it splashed when I was pouring it and went into my eye, okay? So I ended up having what they called um, chemical conjunctivitis when I went to the doctor. They were nice and red. I didn't have a picture of that, but um, that was another mistake that I wore, I, uh, I made. So our hands or our eyes minus PPE, everybody knows what PPE is, right? is a problem, okay? So make sure you always wear your gloves and your eye protection. Make sure you're wearing your PPE, even when you don't think it's necessary, right? I shouldn't have been open, I shouldn't have had chemicals in that box when I opened it, but it would have saved me had I had gloves on. Just the simple act of putting gloves on before I open the box as a precaution for myself. So don't make that mistake. All right. So the next mistake is not defying expectations. I love this mistake. All right. So this is talking to some of the women in the room. I'm sorry, fellas. It's time for me to talk to them. Um, so a lot of times as a woman biomed, uh, one of the things that I always get, and I don't know if you guys get this, but when I walk in a room, the first thing they say is, huh, I don't usually see people like you doing this job. Or I've never seen a girl or I've never seen a woman do this job before. Like, well, you know, they want to know your qualifications. Well, would it, you know, were you trained to be here? <laughs> you know? Um, and I say, and I, I think that that kind of almost forces, forces us into a situation where we have to carry a lot on us because while there's a baseline for somebody else who may not look like us go into the room, they, they have an expectation for what you're gonna bring to the table. Us as, I'm sorry, <laughs> us as females, they, they, that makes me feel like they don't even, they don't know what to expect from me. You know, when I walk in the room, there's no baseline for what I'm gonna do when they walk in the room. So my challenge to you is to make sure that you defy expectations. Let them know that I'm here to do this job just as good, if not better than anybody else. Okay, um, so many, many people expect us to tread carefully. They expect us to take the easier job or the safer project. And I tell you, don't do it. Challenge yourself, okay? Do the thing that you wanna do, you know? If you wanna take that, if you wanna apply for that manager position, if you wanna apply, for the, you know, the tougher positions, apply for those positions. Go out there and, you know, the worst thing they can do is say no, you know, or not send you a response to your resume. 
or, you know, that's the worst thing that can happen. So I, I challenge you to make sure you are defying the expectation because we wanna make sure that, I don't wanna go into more rooms where they don't know what to expect from a female, female biomed. I wanna walk in that room and they're like, ooh, it's a female biomed. I am so glad to see her. I know she's gonna get it fixed, okay? So, you know, I know that's a lot to put on your shoulders, but I wanna make sure that you know that my expectation is that we're defying expectations, okay? Um, I, also, I also encourage you to chase challenges, meaning whether that be professionally or um, personally, okay? Create that YouTube channel. Who cares if you're 55, right? <laughs> do what you wanna do. All right. Next mistake you don't have to make is to think that you are the lone genius. A lot of us biomeds, like I, I'll say it again, we have a culture of perfectionism. So we think we know everything. When we go in the door, we know the equipment. Um, and I really think that it's a mistake not to ask for help if you don't know, okay? There are so many people out here who are a resource to you. Um, I know on my team alone, I came from avionics. I'm good at electronics or building and taking apart things. Um, there's another guy who's IT. He came from IT. He knows everything about computers. If I ever have a question about, you know, what operating system or any of that stuff, I give I give him a call because he's my resource. Okay. Same thing. Um, there's another guy who just started actually. He's a, he came in from HVAC. So anytime there's a problem with a refrigerator, I'm like, hey. I need your help, you know? Um, so it's important not to lean on uh, to your own self, but also lean on your teammates, lean on other biomeds from other places. Uh, like we're in this room right now with several people who do similar things that we do, but they all have talents and things that they bring to the table. You can call and make sure that, you know, you're getting the proper information. So as it says here, I'm not gonna insult your intelligence, you can read it, but it's a good idea to ask for help if you need it. All right, so in conclusion, we talked about that farmer and the donkey, right? So the farmer was shoveling that SH word on top of that donkey, okay? She's just shoveling and shoveling, and much to her dismay, she looks as she shovels, she turns around, she says, whoa, that donkey is standing on the same level as me. He made it out of the hole. Okay, and I, I want to challenge you guys to be just like the donkey. Shake it off and rise up to the next occasion. So, this presentation was about mistakes, but it wasn't really about mistakes. It's about learning and growing and navigating through challenges, right? The everyday challenges that we have. So, I, like I said, I implore you to leave with the spirit of the donkey. I have one more story before we move on to the next slide, which is my goodbye slide. And that is when I was in fourth grade, I had a teacher named Kelly Kelly. And she, and that was her real name. <laughs> um, she used to make us look up a dictionary word every week and then stand in front of the class and explain this dictionary word, what it meant, and then use it in a sentence. Um, one week I decided I had ran out of words and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna look up the word Jenny. Jenny is a word that is special to me because my name is Jennifer and my family endearingly calls me Jenny, okay? I love to hear that, I used to love to hear Jenny from the other room. When my mom said, Jenny, you knew that she was being sweet. When she said, Jennifer Lynn Jester from the other room, I knew that I didn't even wanna go in that room, okay? So it had meant a lot to me when people called me Jenny. That day in fourth grade, I looked up the word Jenny. Does anybody know what the word Jenny actually means in the dictionary? It means female donkey. Okay, I was so upset. I was like, nobody is to ever call me Jenny ever again in life, okay? Because I refuse to be called the female donkey, okay? But the funny thing about this is that as I start to think about it and this story that has been so special to me since I was a child sitting in church, 
and how resilient, stubborn, and just tremendously overcoming this donkey was, it's not so bad to be called Jenny. All right, so I want to thank you guys for listening. And I appreciate you for being here. I did not expect a room full of people today. Um, you guys surprised me in a good way, in a bad way. You got my heart beating really fast. Was super nervous to be here today, but I am glad that I, um, I hope that I was able to inspire somebody. I hope that somebody will take something away from my presentation today.